Okay, I like this because uh, let's really dig deep into Hall of Fame talk. Among the notable first-time candidates, Chipper Jones, 1999 NL MVP, eight-time All-Star, 2008 NL batting champion, 19 seasons in the majors. Our colleague here at MLB Network, Jim Tomey, five-time All-Star, 612 home runs, eighth most all-time. Andrew Jones, 10-time Gold Glove Award winner, a five-time All-Star, 17 seasons. What about Scott Rowland, 1997 NL Rookie of the Year, a seven-time All-Star, won a World Series in 2006. Johan Santana, two-time Cy Young Award winner, four-time All-Star, three ERA titles, over 12 Major League seasons. And Omar Vizquel, 11-time Gold Glove Award winner, three-time All-Star, a career that spanned 24 major league seasons. And the reason I like Hall of Fame discussions is because there's so many different factors that really involve a particular player's candidacy. Uh, Tom, you're a Hall of Fame voter. Let's start with Andrew Jones first. Where are you with Andrew Jones as far as his candidacy for the Hall of Fame? Well, he's got a great case, especially if you look at the first half of his career. At the age of 29, he was essentially Frank Robinson with the bat and Willie Mays in center field. Wow. That was the, the path he was on. And there are people who tell you they're the, he's the best center fielder they ever saw. Unfortunately, he didn't take care of himself well enough to extend his career through his 30s to say, yes, he's a Hall of Famer. So I've got him as a classic borderline guy, and this is just one way to kind of dissect his season, his career, to build it in two halves there. And, you know, yeah, the peak was great, but the second half of the season is what's going to probably detract him. Borderline guy. Joe? <laughs> You, this is your favorite part. This is my least favorite part because I always have to make a case against the uh, guys yeah. who shouldn't who shouldn't get in. And I think these guys are are all outstanding yes. players that had very dynamic careers. But I I just feel that Andrew Jones, based on some of the other guys that I'm looking at, falls a little bit short. Yeah. Tom Scott Rowland. I, I thought that, w that that's an interesting name. Not necessarily the first name I would think of, but he does have some numbers behind him. He does, especially at a position that might be underrepresented in the Hall of Fame when you talk about third base. I think his case comes down to how people value defense, because there's no question in my mind he was a premier defender at third. Maybe the best in his generation, or certainly one of them. Adrian Beltre is certainly there. Um, ran the bases really well for a very big guy, and the offensive numbers. Are Hall of Fame worthy? I mean, I think he's he's a notch below Ron Santo when you look at OPS plus and you look at some of the other counting numbers, the home runs, RBIs, and hits. He's close to Santo, but he's also close to guys like Ron Say, Aramis Ramirez, yeah. and Boyer, who are borderline candidates. He's another one that's on the line. He's got a pretty good case, though, when you look at numbers, and there you can compare him to Ron Santo. He's pretty darn close to Ron Santo. Yeah, I, I also case. like the Ron Say comparison as well. So as a former pitcher, how do you value defense? Well, I value it a lot, and it's one of the great things that I like about baseball as it's making you know, cyclical changes is it's really getting back to looking at outstanding two-way players and how important it is to be able to play on both sides of the ball. Scott Rowland definitely was one of those guys. I saw Mike Schmidt growing up playing third base with the Phillies it saw Scott Rowland in in real time and there were those comparisons from Philly faithful that this guy was just as good uh, as Mike Schmidt defensively and he's one of those guys that's right up there he's an outstanding player all right Omar Vizquel uh, when you talk about defense he was certainly a premier defender at his position 24 seasons and Tom there is the the criticism oh well he's a compiler where are you on Omar Vizquel? <laughs> well, listen, he did play 24 seasons, but I actually think that's a skill. Same here. They, they yeah. yep. I'm with you. Away just for PR because you're reasons. a good guy. You've got to yep. be able to play. He won 11 gold gloves. You can say he was the premier defender at shortstop during his era. Get this. He won a gold glove at age of 39. Not just playing wow. shortstop that old, but winning a gold glove at 39. That's how good he was. Now, I don't think he's in the class of Ozzie Smith, either defensively or offensively. So I think that comparison falls apart a little bit. But the fact is, he played a long time, 13th all-time in games played. The 12 in front of him are all in the Hall of Fame, except for Pete Rose and Barry Bonds. Wow. So the fact that he played that long, I don't hold that against him. I think that works in his favor. Yeah, I, I think 
as far as Ozzie Smith goes, I'm the reason that he's in the Hall of Fame because every <laughs> line dry that I gave up, he was making an outstanding play. Now, Omar Vizquel had, uh, the, you know, that's this similar type of gymnastics out at, at its shortstop playing 24 seasons for echoing what Tom said. It was not Ozzie Smith, and offensively, it's clear cut there as well. But he is to be complimented for being able to keep himself in outstanding shape and on the field and viable for 24 seasons. Well, January 24th, right here, MLB Network, the exclusive announcement as we get ready for the class of 2018 in Cooperstown.